Let me tell you a story. A story of creatures wrapped in carbon fibre, aluminium and titanium. Power courses through their copper veins as they dance and race through the skies. They are immortal. No matter the injury, their creators fix their broken bones. My Armiton Menagerie started with a chameleon, the genesis of its breed, and the starting point for my obsession. It was not the first, but it changed the game. Then the mongoose, evolved over time to be a racer, mortal unlike its brothers. Next, the evolution, the titan rooster, more powerful and stronger than its predecessors. Its birth chronicled the start of this journey that led me to this point. In the bonding between the chameleon and the rooster springs the chameleon T.I. She is perfection, all of her parents' strengths, none of their weaknesses. The pinnacle, until the mighty marmot shows her checkered pelt, her titanium grin, and her aluminium teeth. Let's see what this beast has in store. Hello there. About a year ago, we started this YouTube channel with the Titan Rooster, um, which is a Armiton Rooster frame and Titan Oomph motors. This frame has been doing well, and actually the video series I did building this did pretty well in terms of um, people viewing it and, and getting really good feedback. Um, this frame has actually lasted pretty well. There's been some minor modifications. Uh, I had to replace the camera I put on there, and I've had to and I've put a... Um, Hell's Gate buzzer in the back of it, but beyond that I haven't changed this that much. But it's another year and Armiton have brought out their latest offering, which is the Marmot, which is a thing of beauty. Effectively, if you take the journey that Armiton have been on since the Chameleon um, with their low, low deck um, metal front end uh, quadcopters, this is the latest and greatest version of that. If you just look at the carbon on this, it is an absolute thing to behold. It is beautiful, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I've gone for the 5-inch version because most of my quads are 5-inch quads, so I have lots of spare props that are 5-inch. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're just going to open this up and have a look at what you get in the box and have a quick review of what the frame does. Um, and we'll talk about what we're going to do next at the end. So let's uh, break it down, shall we? Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is this bottom plate. So it's a unibody design, just like the Chameleon, um, and which means that you get a really good stiff frame. You don't have much vibration. You certainly don't have any slop in the arms like you would with a separated arm model. Now, the disadvantage is if you break this bottom plate, you will have to replace the whole thing, which would normally be very expensive. The biggest advantage of Armiton have is they have their lifetime warranty. And with that, if you send them the details of the damage you've got, they will send you a code to um, order an entirely new bottom plate. And the only thing you have to pay for is the shipping, which I think is a fantastic thing. So let's talk about the carbon this is made out of. Um, so you can obviously see this carbon is has a different pattern on it. That's mostly an aesthetic thing, apparently. Um, but what's really really important is that this carbon fibre comes from a company in the US who work with the space agency. So this is what I'm going to call space carbon. Um, so it's, um, it, it's not only is it um, pretty, but it's also really, really very, very strong and very, very rigid. I mean, I'm putting a lot of force through that right now, and that is not budging. Um, compared to the older frames, it is, it is very, very strong. I'm interested to see if anyone can actually break this. I'm sure they will. Um, but it's not only that, so it's also lighter than normal carbon, which is fantastic. So you're always trying to look for a low weight. So from that perspective, this is probably some of the best carbon fibre you're going to get from a, from a quadcopter. So also, they've now started chamfering the edges on the bottom plate. So that's, um, that's really good. That's a nice little feature. Um, it means you don't have to sand it down too much. So that is really very useful. Okay, so while I've got the bottom plate out, I just want to talk about the layout of the frame. So it is a squashed X design, so therefore the, an X that's been squashed out, so therefore you've got the arms as far away over here as you can, so that giving you the most distance for the props to, to spin in and keeping them out of the sight of the of the camera. Um, if you want to know more about uh, frame design and different types of frame, I did an article, I'll link it below, that I did on drone nodes around different frames. But what I want to do now is just compare this to an OG Chameleon frame. So this is a frame that I broke as you can see around here, um, it had quite a whack at various different points. But what you can see is that the centre section is about the same. That's normally limited by the flight controller, so that is the same pretty much. Um, but what you've got here is a little bit more length in the arms. And that means you can run 5.5 inch props, 
which means you can go really big on your props. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. So anyway, let's now break it down and see what you get in the box. Okay, so let's talk about what you get with your Marmot frame. So you obviously get your Armaton battery strap, which is actually a very good battery strap, especially now they've put the uh, metal clasp on it. You get the bottom plate, which we've already talked about. You will get your camera mount plate and your top plate. Now these um, are made out of similar carbon fibre, but this is uh, 1.2 millimetres and this is two millimeters thick um, whereas the bottom plate is four millimeters thick these have not got the same chamfered edges so armaton have kindly provided a uh, diamond file for you to be able to file those edges down to make them a little bit smoother now just as a word of warning carbon fiber dust is really not very good for you so make sure you do it in a well ventilated area and ideally um, what i do is i do it i do these with water running over them so that there's no risk of dust getting into my lungs because that is bad okay so then let's make a way around for everything else that you get so you get some nice foam pads for your battery mount and your camera you get some little foam feet i don't tend to use these i use slightly bigger ones on most of my frames so i'll probably swap those out um, you get these two different mounts at the top here so these are for your video transmitter sma uh, connector so where your uh, the tail comes out of the quad. So this one is for your sort of traditional style where you can run it run it through no problem at all, whereas this is for a um, Unified Pro style, a sort of a TBS style one where you've got two little screws either side that you can screw it into. So those are fitted into the back of the quad. Now there are other options and I'll show you those a little bit later on, but those are the ones that come in the kit. So gear wise you have, uh, this is stainless steel, uh, sorry, steel bolts not stainless steel these are steel bolts um, uh, etc in here so you've got those um, so it's all steel from a from a bolts perspective you get this quite little nice little plastic um, piece at the back which is for your antenna to come out of, of the back of the quad so I didn't realize this was a thing um, so actually this is quite useful if you've got a unified pro or um, if you're using a sort of single antenna I mean you could use it for another type but, but it's quite a nice thing to have so you can actually have um, a you can it's a nice thing that comes with it i probably won't use it but it is a nice thing to have you've got a rubber grommet that goes in the back of this you have a little front standoff that goes in your front cage now the main piece of this and the piece de resistance of this is the front cage of this quadcopter um, it is a titanium front end so these pieces here are titanium and they are beautiful they are look at them they are so shiny and they are incredibly light. So uh, Armiton started using uh, titanium on their rooster and I have yet to break the front end of mine and I've crashed it into metal many, many times. Um, I've killed more cameras than I have the, uh, the, the titanium. So these are incredibly strong and they've now got two parts of it which we will talk about in a minute. The other parts of the frame are these. So these are camera savers. So what this means is that when you smash your drone into something, this is more likely to give than your camera as I understand it so it's a nice piece of design that they've gone for I think they did this on their gecko um, as a preemptor but I am not sure because I haven't got a gecko and finally at the rear you've got two aluminium standoffs to set things up so that's what you get in the box sorry one last thing you get in the box but well, I got in the box is a wonderful um, Armiton suite. Armiton sends suites out with their frames uh, if you do order them direct. In fact, if you order anything from them, and these suites are really, really nice. I wish I knew where to get them from. I do very much like them. Okay, so that's all the things you get with the frame. So what I'm gonna now do is I'm going to now put the whole thing together. Okay, so the first thing I've gone and done is I've gone and just used the file that Armiton provided and filed the edges of these underwater. So it literally took me a couple of minutes just to go and file these edges down, just to just to knock the sharp edges off, just to make sure that I don't cut any cables on them or, or cut myself at any point. So that's just a two minute job. Okay, so now let's put together the front cage. So what do we need for that? Well, we need the cage, the camera plate. We need to have these two, two little savers, the little cross member uh, standoff and two eight millimeter hex head screws. So you'll need a two millimeter um, hex driver to put this all together. So what you want to do is get your one of your arms and there's a little notch on the inside and what you want to do is get hold of one of your savers, get the pointy end in there, and get a bolt to go through like so, like that. And then we're going to just finger tighten this standoff into there. So as you can see here you'll end up with something that looks a bit like like that. And all we're going to do is we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. So 
we make sure that the notch is on the inside. We're going to get the saver put in the middle, put the bolt through, like so. So now what we want to do is get this top plate on. So for that we need to have some 4mm screws. So I will find those, which will be these ones here. We can screw these on as well. Okay, so that's our front camera pod put together. That is very, very light. Um, and one of the things I um, talk about when I uh, was building different chameleon frames and different armament frames is generally putting them together is really enjoyable. And, I, I, and this one so far has uh, has that same nice feeling. So hopefully that continues on. Okay, so the next step is to look at the back end. So we have two different options for your video transmitter. And we've got a nice option here that's for your receiver. In this case I'm looking at a, a crossfire receiver but you could use a, an R9 receiver if you wanted. But let's start on the left here. So the Unify Pro back end piece effectively you get the two parts here, you then get your screws. Again these are two millimeter hex drivers again and I can screw that in here like so. And then this effectively then screws into the back end of your quad. So this goes in the back piece and this goes in, uh, this screws in. So the next option is the sort of more traditional style without the screws. So this is an SMA type connector. And I'm just going to unscrew this part. I'm going to take one of these rings off. I'm going to place one of these rings through here, like so. I'm going to get this little piece here and I'm going to force it into the gusset, force this, force this gusset in. Okay, so it will then look something like this. Then you quite simply put this piece here. Apologies. So that piece goes through there, that piece goes through there. This piece goes onto here, through there like that. This piece goes on here, and apparently this piece goes on here. Now that starts to feel quite tight to me, and let's see if we can actually get this uh, bolt on. I don't think that's going to quite fit, so I think these spaces are probably overkill. So let's just take those off. Back end, so again that goes in the same way as this, so that's an alternate option. Now the final part is this crossfire piece that I actually genuinely didn't know was a, a thing until now. So what you do is you place this piece in here, you get these two little sunk nuts, you push those into the back here, like so, like so. What you can then do is you see the little holes at the back here, you can then screw this into here. So what I'm going to do is just place this down, get these bits through like that, get this into position, there we go. I'm going to cheat and put these through first, just because it's easier to do it this way round. Put the sunk nut in, then screw that down, like so. Move that into position. And do the same again. So, now you can do this with another type of receiver, um, but I just wanted to demonstrate it with a crossfire because that's one of the more common ones. So, there you go, that's your options for the back end. Okay, so now we're going to do the bottom plate. Now, just want to talk a couple of bits about the design here. So, you can see here you've got holes for your standard flight controller size, but you can also run a 20 by 20 flight controller in here. Further to that, you've also got the capability to put a number of different options in the back here. So you can see there's a number of different holes. So you can have um, some a 20 by 20 that you can slide around and move different size of, sizes. So there's a lot of different options in this frame, which is something I haven't seen in, um, in, in many frames. It's something that's starting to become common, but, but this is the first one I've had. So that's quite a nice little touch. 
But anyway, let's get um, let's get on and put it together. So first of all, I'm going to put the flight controller standoffs in. Um, they use metal standoffs on Armiton frames, which is quite uh, metal sort of main screws. Sorry, um, on Armiton frames, which is quite nice. Um, it means they're nice and rigid and they don't break um, so easily. So I'm just going to put those in now. Okay, so we've um, put the standoffs in, so I've only done them finger tight because I'm only doing this as a temporary build for the moment, but normally you would tighten those up. So next thing we do is take these aluminium parts and we're going to put them on the back end. So we want the, the, the pointy bit here sticking upwards, so all we're going to do is get those on, get a one of the screws, and finger tighten that up. Okay, so that's now in. So we can now take some do, 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 do four mil screws. I'm always going to take. Oh, which one should we take for a temporary measure? Let's put this in here. So we're going to place that in the space. There's some little holes in the back here. So as you can see here, I'm just going to screw that in. Can you see? There we go. So I'm just going to screw that in. Okay, so that screws into the back end. I mean, you could screw in this piece if you wanted to, but I'm just going to put the uh, the, the Unified Pro style one in there. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in these uh, front ends. So they fit into these little gaps at the front, and again we're going to take the screw, I'm going to put it through the hole, and then we can then tighten that right up. So that goes in, tighten that right down. So that's our those bits in. Um, now one of the things that I saw on a video, um, I saw some things on Facebook around, is there were some people having issues with the tolerance in this area here. Now I've got no problems at all, that is perfectly good, and there is tiny tiny little gap at the front there but beyond that those are solidly locked in so there's no problems there okay so the next step is to fit this camera pod now one of the really impressive things and one of the real innovations in this design is the way this camera pod fits onto the front and what it means is you actually can get full adjustability of your where you put your HD camera or GoPro mount on your quad so effectively there's a little slot that runs down the whole back of the titanium part and then there's these three screw holes here or one on each or three on each side and what that means is you can put your camera on here and then you effectively put bolts uh, the, the screws in there to tighten that whole thing up and that means you can go down to as little as I think a 10 degree angle as up as high as well that gives you two screws in, in, in on each side uh, that would give you one screw so you could go uh, pretty crazy if you like I think realistically you probably wouldn't go much more than uh, around about there but you've got almost a, a fairly ridiculous level of uh, adjustability there now the way you fit this is you get yourself I, I found that getting one screw right to start with is the right way of doing it so what I'm going to do is get this hopefully you can see so I'm going to set it up on its end I'm going to get the middle hole here, I'm going to try and in fact, I'm going to put the screw on the end of this to start with, so I don't have to find it. There we go. So I'm just going to get it lined up, there you go, so you can see. I'm going to take the screwdriver, I'm going to put it into the hole and do that one up, just to get one in. There we go. He says, being able to screw something in. There we go, so we can tighten that up. And that will lock that down. The good thing is here, the way they've designed it is these are offset just enough that you can easily get a, a, a screwdriver in the front of it. So that's a fantastic bit of design there from Armiton. Okay, so now I can put these other ones in. All I'm going to do for today is just put two of them in there because I'm just doing this to show you how to put it together. But you would normally put in, you could put in two, you can put in, if it's on your camera angle, you could put in four, I probably would suggest four, uh, and you can actually put six six screws in the front end here, so there we go, that's two in. So as you can see here, I could put another, there we go, so I could put, uh, let's get this camera focused, so I can put a screw in here at the front, I can put a screw in here, obviously which I have done, and I could actually put another screw in right up there as well. So. Um, so there's a load of different options and a good way of adjusting that, but that for me is quite a quite a good angle. Okay, so when I was um about to put the top plate on, I noticed that one of the things that's very important here is this piece here. Now, if this is this way up, and I place, and I've got the uh, little antenna mount in there, this gets in the way. So you have to make sure this is the right way up. So I'm going to just flip that over, um, but it's worth mentioning to get that the right way up. 
Okay, so there we have it. So I have removed the back plate because I'm actually not going to use um, that mount. I've actually got something different which I will show you in a minute. Um, if you wanted to, you could stick the foam pads on the top as you need to. Um, the other one I've lost. There we go, so that can go on there. I'm not going to do that because I use uh, Velcro, so I'll actually put a Velcro pad on the top because that holds my batteries on, and I'm going to put a GoPro mount on here, so I'm not going to mess about with the front end here at the moment. So um, that's still to be done. So, and also you'd need to put your little feet on, but I'm going to use some different ones for that. So, ultimately, that's how you build this whole frame. So, um, <laughs> realistically, uh, I am really impressed with this. This was the same feeling I got when I put my chameleon together. It's just a real joy to put together. It's really nicely thought through. Um, everything goes together. It's really very, very strong. I'm just going to put it on the scales. Admittedly, I have not put, I've got an antenna on the back of it, so it's not a true true measurement but I will just put it on here for a second so that is 121 grams with the antenna on the back so not too bad and without the foam so it probably evens itself out so that's not a bad weight for a starting point for a frame so um, what I'm gonna do next but not in this video is I'm gonna build this up so what I've got is some it's gonna have some lovely brand new um, T motors, some F40 Pro 3s. Uh, these are the 14, uh, 2400 kV motors, so these are going to go on each each corner. So I've got four of those. I have got a CAD, uh, a Foxeer, whoop, where is it? Falcor. Um, so that will go in the front end. Now, one of the things that's worth mentioning about this front end here is that this requires you to have either a mini or a micro camera. So um, you need to go small. You can't use a standard HS77, 177 size camera. So remember that when you're purchasing all your bits and pieces. So I'm going to have that, some F40s. I obviously have got a Unified Pro that I'm going to put in the back of it. I've got an Axie antenna, which has gone missing. I've got a Crossfire, which I'm going to put on here as well. So that's, um, so I've got Crossfire and I'm going to be running the um, Hobby Wings uh, 45 amp ESC, so all in one ES, four in one ESCs, and I am also going to be running, and I'm very excited about this because I haven't had a chance. I've had this for a while and haven't had a chance to play with it. A um, Radex uh, FPV Radex flight controller, so I am very excited to put all this together. So um, ultimately, I am going to leave it up to you guys, really, at this point, of what you would like me to do. Now, I could just put this all together in one straightforward build and uh, show you the results but I'm also keen to know what you'd like so I could happily do this as a build series like I did with my rooster but I will leave you to make those comments at the bottom of the page so let me know and I will make my decision okay so let's wrap this all up well this is just an amazing frame it's so well thought through so well designed and it's just the perfect evolution of uh, the chameleon from two years ago so it is just amazing this camera mount is just a work of art it's um, done with a six axis mill so it's just beautiful absolutely beautiful um, I've put some parts in so I put the camera in there just to sort of get a feel for what that looked like I've also 3 print printed a, um, a, a mount for my crossfire I've got a GoPro mount being printed over here so that's uh, that's why you've got all this noise in the background so apologize for that um, ultimately I will be doing a flight video of this soon um, so I'll do a proper flight video but I will do a build video if you want me to so if you want me to put some comments in the box below uh, that would be very very useful thank you very much for your time today sorry there was the big RT bit at the front I just fancy doing something a bit different so I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you all next time Thank you for reaching the end of this video. If you've enjoyed it, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. It really does help grow this channel. Thank you so much for your ongoing support.